Hello there guys and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video I'm going to be talking about Sasquatch and uh, he does look uh, quite an interesting guy. Uh, so he's going to be a Mystic Class Champion. I'm not going to read all of his bio and uh, all the bits of his mechanics but basically he has access to uh, Rapture, Stagger, Regeneration buffs and also there's going to be quite a lot of power manipulation where he has an increased power gain, combat power gain and also his special attacks can cost uh, half the amount of power and that could potentially lead some extremely interesting combinations. So as I mentioned he's a Mystic Class champion, his prestige is like on par pretty much with all of the other champions released this year so it's quite high, it's not in top 10 but it's uh, still definitely high enough to be considered also as a prestige rank up. Now his strengths uh, are his survival survivability, he has uh, multiple mechanics that either let him regenerate or take less damage, uh, he's gonna be able to throw a lot of special attacks uh, due to the things that I mentioned, gaining more power in fights and uh, then his special attacks causing a uh, costing less power and he is also kind of able to maintain his aggression uh, and making sure your opponent can't get his level 3 which is quite interesting because opponents can gain less power as you're hitting them in certain conditions and then also you can be able to power drain if they are at level 3. So his weaknesses will be debuffs especially fatigue and weight and slow because uh, some of his core fundamental mechanics will depend uh, on building these rage uh, counters and he cannot build any rage if he has fatigue or ender weight active. Uh, so it's kind of like Dr. Doom where Dr. Doom cannot enter uh, his well he cannot gain his aura of Azvarath which is a huge part of his core kind of like offensive capabilities and defensive ones so he has weakness to end weight and fatigue debuffs also slow debuffs will prevent his unstoppable abilities thus he's going to be much easier to manage power control power things if he cannot throw special attacks he's going to be quite easily to manage and debuff immunity obviously because uh, you want and have to place a rapture debuff on opponent to deal quite a lot of damage. So anyways, uh, Thick Power Coat provides 90% cold snap resistance along with immunity to frostbite effects and armor break debuffs. So that is important thing to keep in mind. There is the cold snap immunity and uh, arm break immunity which is also becoming more and more important. Regeneration rate is inverted, all regen effects are removed so you will never be able to reverse heal this guy if uh, basically under any circumstance his regen rate uh, yeah, basically he's just gonna not <laughs> regen. It's kind of like a built-in more or less Lionheart node or something of the sort. Uh, gain 25% combat power rate if the opponent has a buff or is suffering from a staggered debuff. This is increased to 50% if the opponent has four or more of these effects. So against champions who have a lot of buffs or going up against nodes who have a lot of buffs, he will gain a whole bunch more power than any average champion would. Or additionally, if the champion doesn't have any debuffs active, then you can just heavy attack and heavy attack will inflict a decent length stagger. I think it's 14 seconds. Yeah, here it says 14 seconds and you can have max stack of those uh, as well at two. So you can place a stagger and gain more power. So in an, any average matchup presumably you're just gonna want to start off with a heavy attack and then you're gonna enjoy increased amount of power gain which is kind of cool I love these increased amounts of power gain especially useful for like Red Guardian it is really helpful so medium tax 30% chance to inflict a rupture debuff dealing 1000 physical damage over 10 17 seconds so that's not a whole lot of damage at all plus 70 percent chance during Wrath of Tanarak, so basically 100% chance on mediums if you are in Wrath of Tanarak, and uh, still it's a good interaction in between Despair as well, because these are debuffs that last 17 seconds, so it's going to be relatively easily in my opinion to keep a healthy stack of them on opponent. So yeah, as I mentioned, heavy attack stagger, and uh, now we have Spirit of Rage, max stacks 15. Light attacks have a 30% chance to build one rage, Chance in uh, chance increased 100% on third light attack in each combo. So if you drop three lights, and so if you go medium, light, 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 medium, uh, on any average circumstance, you would have 30% chance on your two mediums to inflict rapture. Uh, so and you would have basically one guaranteed rage plus two additional chance of 30%. So that is kind of like relatively frequent. Uh, rate in my opinion for every combo to name, get some sort of net results. Build one rage every 4.5 seconds that Sasquatch didn't land a hit and uh, this is in my opinion obviously going to be his key defensive capability because these rages do help him defensively and kind of like forwards his gameplay and I think the only reason we see this ability 
uh, right here right now is just so he is more viable as a champion on defense where he doesn't typically get to land a lot of hits on you but this would ensure that he still activates all of his rages and all his abilities thus making him much more difficult defensive fight each stack of rage reduces incoming damage from all sources except special 3 by 5 percent per stack so this is working kind of like things protection obviously it's not quite as extreme uh because it can go up to max stacks of 15, but there's a good chance he's not going to get up to 15 stacks because he's going to enter his uh, Rage of Tanarak mode or whatever it's called. But still, it's going to make him a solid bit tankier and harder to deal with uh, and harder to kill as well, obviously. Rage not affected by ability accuracy reduction, but it is prevented while suffering from an Enderweight or Exhaustion debuff. So that is a very easy way how to deal with him. Uh, just bring in somebody with Enderweight or Exhaustion and uh, then you're kind of good to go. And bring in Gwenpool, drop a level 2 or Spider Gwen level 1 would be pretty much perfect because you can also access slow and uh, yeah, so those on top of the head seem like very simple counters to him. Now Wrath of Tanarak is kind of like his uh, Berserk mode more or less. If Sasquatch has 5 or more rage, each stack gained above this threshold has a flat 10% chance to remove all stacks and trigger Wrath of Tenerak. This lasts for 1.5 seconds per stack removed. So each stack basically gives him 1.5 second duration, so if you were 10 then you would have 17 seconds in this Wrath of Tenerak. And uh, yeah, so the bad thing about this, you never know it's really going to trigger and not, I'm not a big fan of these kind of like random mechanics because there will be times when you desperately want to enter this Wrath of Tenerak and it just never, never seems to happen. So, I don't know, I'm not the biggest fan of the fact that it's absolutely random and you have very little control over it. During Wrath of Tenrak, Sasquatch is stun immune, so that is important to note, uh, especially if you are facing him uh, as your opponent gain 1130 block penetration and 50% uh, combat power rate. So that's very important because it will stack up with his original increase of the power rate based on the staggers or buffs that opponents have. So effectively you could have 100% increased power rate which means you would be able to gain power like a crazy person. And uh, that definitely does seem interesting, that definitely seems something that could be like explored. Special 1 and 2 cost 50% less power and Special 3 costs 25% less power. So in this rate uh, I could kind of imagine him being able to <laughs> gain a bar of Special Attack pretty much with a single combo and then that costing... Uh, it, it, it sounds like it could be quite a fun time spamming your special attacks with him is all I'm gonna say once you're in that Wrath of Tenrak, especially if opponent has a lot of buffs. While the opponent has three full bars of power, special and heavy attacks will power then 5% of their max power. So here is the cool bit because yeah you don't have to keep on baiting opponent special attacks, you can kind of utilize your rage mode to the fullest because even if opponent would be pushed as special 3, so long as you're throwing a special attack or you're just spamming heavy attacks, you don't have anything to worry about and you don't actually have to bait out opponent special attacks and I absolutely love this type of mechanic. I think it's cool, I think more champions should have it. Kind of like, I don't know, Namor for instance. Namor kind of has it as well where you don't where his special attacks don't give opponent power whilst you are on your Imperious Rex, for instance. But yeah, whilst you have these kind of like mega OP rage modes, opponents shouldn't kind of like ruin it by failing to throw a special attack. I think a good example would be Captain Marvel movie version when she's in binary and you kind of go and you drop your level 2, there's that stun and then quite often you end up wasting quite a bit of that stun time and quite a bit of potential damage just because after a combo to which you change special two uh, and a heavy attack and another combo. Basically, they're almost always at three bars of power or close to three bars of power, so you need to be very careful, careful and quick baiting out of special attack. So yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. It does seem quite interesting. Now, special attack one each hit refreshes the opponent's rapture debuffs. This can trigger into opponent's block. So that's about all it says. You can keep spamming special ones and then keep stacking these ruptures pretty much indefinitely, I'd assume. So he does seem to have potential of, I don't know, being able to get like 30, 40, 50 ruptures consistently and just keep spamming them. And in long fights, that could actually be a really, really interesting strategy where you just continuously keep on building these rupture debuffs. Now, that is definitely a 
a champion I'd like to test out against Realm of Legends Wolverine as a 3 star or something. If the final hit is blocked it has 20% chance to inflict a stun debuff for 3 seconds. Fair enough. And chance increased to 100% during Wrath of Tenrak. So don't block his special 1 is what they're trying to say. Special 2. The first 2 hits remove the opponent's Rapture debuffs, gaining a lot of attack rating for each Rapture removed. This is increased by 50% if uh, activated during Wrath of Tenrak. Uh, so, this is going to be your damage special. And also, this could potentially have uh, an ability to throw an insane amount of damage, because if you keep refreshing the Raptures on your opponent, you could, I don't know, get to 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 raptures on your opponent by spamming special ones and then go for an absolutely massive level 2 which is going to obviously gain a whole lot of attack rating increase and then you should be able to put up some really serious numbers. But how practical it is we're obviously going to have yet to see but the fact that he will likely have an increased power gain range through most of it, you should be able to get a lot of stuff in. The final hit inflicts up to 3 Rapture debuffs, each dealing 3000 uh, physical damage over 17 seconds, so that's nothing kind of like too important, it's just kind of like replace some of your Raptures there. Uh, special 3, uh, passively regenerate 10% of missing health over 5 seconds, this is increased by a flat 1% per rage stat. So this is definitely useful, especially considering he's going to be able to get his level 3s relatively easier than most champions would. and. Uh, yeah, so you're going to be able to regen a decent amount as well. And at other effect, gain up to 5 stacks of Rage and enter Wrath of Tanurak. Tanurak, yes. These stacks don't count towards the regeneration. Uh, so you basically just gain a whole bunch of Rage stacks. And obviously you have Chant and you enter with Rage of Tanurak, which is going to let you spam more special attacks and do a lot more stuff. And uh, as mentioned in Abilities of Wrath of Tanurak, basically after your special 3, you will almost be at a bar of power, so landing a combo will automatically let you drop another special attack and kind of like carry on and keep going. So that that is quite interesting, yes. I do like quite a lot of this bit. Uh, now, signature ability, uh, when below 40% of max health getting struck by contact attack has 70% chance to activate Sasquatch's healing factor, passively regenerating 5% of missing health over 20 seconds, max attack 3. So this is clearly a defensive ability because when below 40% of max health you don't want to get struck and uh, I mean it's going to be helpful when you do happen to slip up but uh, it's not going to be an ability that um, gets utilized too much. It's going to be an ability that you have to deal with every single time you fight Sasquatch though. So it's going to make him whole tankier and livelier and it's going to be clearly quite annoying. During Wrath of Tanrak, Sasquatch becomes passively unstoppable during special and heavy attacks and the opponent's defensive combat power rate is reduced by 70% when struck by these attacks. Now that is going to be extremely important because obviously this is going to make your opponents gain a whole lot less of power and it's going to let you be a whole lot more loose when spamming your special attacks so on and so forth. So, that uh, does look like it's uh, a, an awakened ability that's very nice to have and would help him kind of like open up and go a bit more wild spamming special attacks after special attack but it's not mandatory so I do like the fact that he's not automatically must get to SIG 200 kind of like champion but yeah, and uh, that is about it for his ability. So I'm going to quickly go over synergies. So first and foremost is Man Thing and Sabertooth. Sasquatch during Wrath of Tenor gain 12% attack. So that's kind of like cool, I guess. Man Thing, striking buffed opponent, gets him 5 additional agitations. Cool. Uh, Sabertooth, once per fight, throwing special attack 3, grants 1 persistent charge. Now that is a sad state of affairs that this has to be a synergy. That is... <clears throat> an ability that I personally believe Sabertooth should already have because he's a ramp up champion that just randomly loses his ramp up in the middle of the quest. Uh, but hey, it's better than nothing, so it's appreciated. Uh, it's not gonna like make Sabertooth insane or anything, but at least now you can bring in Sabertooth and keep using Sabertooth. Alright, uh, so Gamma Ray Ray, Sasquatch, special to inflict one additional Rapture debuff, so it's neat. Uh, Hulk, whilst Fury buff is active, the opponent's ability power rate is reduced by 150%. This attack effect lingers for 0.2 seconds after Fury. This is 
good. <laughs> this could lead Hulk to be a lot more punk champion because you can stun loop the opponents. And if you're just throwing a level once whilst continuously Fury is active, you should be able to get in a lot more damage without risking to push him opponent level 3 and then eating a special 3 in the face. So yeah, I do like this energy. Obviously it's not gonna make Hulk insane, but it kind of goes well with his power set and it's definitely gonna be something fun to play with. Now with Squirrel Girl, Sasquatch Rapture effects last 20% longer, which is kind of like cool. When TP Toe attaches the opponent, she stays on for 30% longer. Again, it's not, nothing insane. Now, Giant Challengers King Root Thing and Sentinel, Sasquatch stack the fight with three stacks of rage. That will be, in my opinion, uh, really useful because that's gonna help him enter his uh, rage mode quicker. King Root stack the fight with three plus fury. Okay, honestly, seriously, who, who cares? It's King Root, man. Thing stack the fight with three rock stacks. Now that's a few too few to count. <laughs> like, yeah, that, that's not enough. Sentinel stack the fight with 30 analysis charges. Now that could be helpful for Sentinel to get a lot quicker to where he wants to go. So that's kind of neat. And with Hulkbuster, each stack of rage increased Wrath of Tenrak by additional 0.3 seconds. I uh, Cool. Uh, again, it's nice to have kind of thing. Hulkbuster started the fight with an infinite armor buff granting 50% armor rating. This can stack about Hulk Hulkbuster's armor of cap. Now that is super useful because Hulkbuster gains a lot of bonuses from additional armor up. So I think that is kind of like the most realistic and uh, helpful synergy and it definitely will help quite a lot to Hulkbuster. Not to mention that there are pretty much no other synergies in the game that give champions armor buffs, I think. Uh, so yeah, I do like this one. I do think it's going to be helpful too. Hulkbuster. Recommend Master's Recovery, Mystic Dispersion, and Dispair ne Inequity. Cool. But yeah, uh, what do I think about uh, this guy? Now, uh, I think he's gonna be really fun. I think he's gonna be... Uh, fun, crazy. I, I, reading his abilities, to me, reads a lot like Carnage, kind of like 2020 type of Carnage. Where, and, and this is not meant to be an, an insult at all, because Carnage is my one of my personal favorite champions in a sense of how fun he is now. I have no illusions and I don't think that Carnage is the most insane champion in the world, but I have a rank two six star Carnage and I do use him here and there. And I often choose to use him just because he's really, really fun with gaining extra power, with having like unblockable special attacks and uh, just doing a lot of debuffs on opponent and then refreshing them, so and so forth. So I do have the kind of like feeling of this guy to be kind of similar type of champion. Now again, I don't expect him to be good. Realistically, he has hardly to not utility. He's only immune to Cold Snap, which is not the most needed immunity and he has no other immunities. And so the power break. Now his power control is okay. Okay, but again, it's not real power control in the sense that uh, you will prevent opponent from throwing special attacks. It's power control in the sense that opponents are going to be able to level 3 you. So he's not really a power control champion. Now, he doesn't have any nullify abilities outside of stagger, so he's not really the buff control champion. And there is not a whole lot in a sense of... Uh, kind of like countering and answering a lot of problems. He doesn't have access, I don't know, to slow debuff. And there just isn't too much of kind of like what's high in demand, what's needed for a champion to kind of like be high up in tier lists. However, there is a whole lot of debuffs and stacking debuffs and potentially, I don't know, building up to 99 raptures on opponent or whatever. And there is a lot of increased power rate and there are a lot of special spamming involved and there are some regeneration. So I think he's going to be absolutely fantastically enjoyable and fun champion. And potentially maybe decent on defense, don't quite think so, but uh, maybe. But in its essence, I think he's going to be fun. He's going to be great. Uh, he's not going to be new Doom. He's not going to be new Black Widow Clairvoyant. He's not going to be Ghostquake or any of the kind of like top meta champions, right? Uh, how good he exactly he is absolutely entirely depends on exactly how much damage he does because that is going to be his main calling card. He's going to be spamming special attacks, stacking raptures, dealing damage over time, throwing a lot of 
weird stuff opponents way gaining a lot of power and uh, yeah that's great that's fun it's not gonna again be what you absolutely must have on your account if you want to beat act six or variant or whatever but it's something you want to have on your account to have fun in this game just like most of the champions this year many champions like Squirrel Girl, and see, it's an insanely fun champion to play with, not the most needed, but always great to use. So yeah, that is what I think uh, is going to be definitely kind of like Sasquatch's thing for now, and uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think. Do you guys think he's going to be insane? Do you guys think he's going to be average? Again, my personal thoughts lie that I think he's not going to be the most practical or needed champion, but super, super fun one, because yes, who doesn't like spamming special attacks? Uh, stacking debuffs, refreshing those debuffs. That's that's exactly what definition of fun in MCOC is for me. So the, he does look like a really fun champion. And on the bright side, he does not need to be Sig 200 or and uh, awakened at all. To be fair. So yeah, uh, let's show you some baby Yoda. Go down to the comment section. Let me know what you expect him to be. Leave a hashtag Sasquatch. Uh, in the comment section so i know you guys have watched it thus far hit that like button hit that sub button show this video to your alliance mates um ask them what they think about sasquatch encourage them to come to this video drop a comment let me know what they think about sasquatch because i'm always interested in hearing other people's opinions uh, but that will do for today uh so i'll catch you guys soon see ya